Oh, what's going on Call of Duty refugees? A lot of people are mad today fellas. We got the Call of Duty fans out here, Call of Duty BBC writers, the D writers, the Call of Duty haters as well. We also have like the refugees, the Call of Duty refugees. I've never seen a collaboration on this level ever coming true. Guys, we're gonna get into it. Like the video if you love your mama, like the video if you don't like having rigged Skill based matchmaking, just like the video if you like it. Shout out to the homie uh, Blame Truth, roll it. Blame Truth here, and for those that say I never make a positive video or I need to make more positive content or whatever, bookmark yeah. this video, please. Like mm. it, favorite it, subscribe, say I, I want to bury your children, BT, in the comment section, whatever you have to do. I, I, I tried bookmarking, but update requires restart. Say, say psych, just say psych. I don't think this is real. Is this a real video? Man, okay, let's see. Mark this video and refer back to it anytime you say I'm just negative. I want to praise Black Ops 6 today. Now, this praise comes with some uh, conditions, some, some caveats, but we're- There we go, there we go. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I refuse to believe it. I refuse to believe that this is gonna be a positive video. We're talking about the homie Blame Truths, man. We're gonna get there when we get there. They, they actually aren't for me this time. The honeymoon phase is basically over already for Black Ops 6 for a lot of people that praise the game nonstop since it came out. Uh, I've been super critical of the game, so this is actually something positive. Nuketown is back, and this single-handedly saves the game. I, I was thinking about this last night when I was making my video about Black Ops. Now, I, I said it in my past videos. I personally find Black Ops 6 odd. I find it odd, though. I don't think the game is impressive. I don't think the game is a masterpiece, but I also don't think the game is trash, right? I mean, everybody got different opinions, and that's cool, though, but I do be looking like this kid right now, man. I, I don't know, man. I do be kind of enjoying the game. I don't know how, why, what, but I do be kind of enjoying the game, and Nuketown came out, so I'm like, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> yeah, I, I do be kind of enjoying the game, but of course, I'm not Delulu to the point where I don't see what's going on. Man, Nuketown, I, I love this map. There's no mistakes about it, okay? Make no mistakes, it's a good map. But see, the problem here is that the actual maps that we got in Black Ops 6 are so trash that n having Nuketown is what's making me hyped up and a lot of people are actually excited to jump on Nuketown. That's a problem, man. We definitely need good maps because otherwise the game, mechanically speaking, is that. You know, it's hype. I want to know your thoughts for sure. Uh, if you think it's the worst Call of Duty game ever, yeah, let me know, man. But at least you would have to agree that it's better than Dustborn and Concord. Yeah, at least, guys, at least. But let's wait for it. Six, uh, the, the full review video. This game's so much like Modern Warfare 2019. I don't mean on how it plays or the speed of the game or, or whatever. I mean that it's so divisive. When mm. MW 2019 came out, people either loved it or they hated it and thought it was a giant pile of shit. And <laughs> it, the same thing's happening here with Black Ops 6. I have never seen this much divide within the Call of Duty community. Nuketown here, single-handedly, for me personally, saves this game the same way Shoot House saved Modern Warfare 2019 for a lot of people. As sad as that fucking is, it's the truth. There I've said go. it before, I'll say it again. I, I, I mean, like, to be fair though, Nuketown, you need to really, maybe not you, you, no, I'm not talking about you, you watching the video, but like, the current Black Ops 6 devs, they really need to thank the Black Ops 1 devs for making Nuketown, because after 14 years, Black Ops 1 devs that created that masterpiece of a game and this masterpiece of a map is still feeding their families. <laughs> Think about this for a second. I mean, damn, bro. Like the video if that's the realest uh, thing you ever heard. Good maps are the foundation of a multiplayer shooter. If your maps suck like they did in Modern Warfare 2019 and like they do in this game, the game may as well be the worst shooter ever. The battlegrounds mm. you play on are iconic. They are what sets the entire flow, tone, feel of the game. When they suck this fucking bad like they do in Black Ops 6 and you play something like Nuketown, it is a shock to the senses. You're like, oh, this game can be kind of good, actually. It, it's, it's night and fucking day. I don't care mm. what the goddamn oh, data says. I don't care about that. Stop making fucking shitty shipment size maps. Stop it. The smallest a map needs to be needs to be like Nuketown and you need to make it three lanes with a good spawn system. Yes, you heard me right. The spawn system in this actually kind of behaves like the old Nuketown. I don't really notice any difference. It is night and day how much better this plays than everything else in Black Ops 6, which begs the question. They actually just re Remastered the Black Ops 1 Nuketown, and I don't mind it. You know, it's uh, 
Yeah, I, and, and I read some comments and some of you guys, very few of you, and I've been reading like Twitter comments as well. Uh, like, uh, yeah, some people are actually saying they're, they're, they don't want to see like Nuketown over and over. And I get that, okay, I mean, that's your opinion, that's your opinion. But Nuketown is in shipment. These maps are like staples, you know, like without Nuketown, Black Ops game would be incomplete. I, I think we should always get Nuketown, absolutely. But I do agree that the maps, even though I'm currently like, Finding the game, I right, I gotta be. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, guys. Like, I'm finding the game, I right, but even I know it's not impressive. It's not. It's not the best game ever out there. But it's I right. right? It, it, it's I right. It'd be what it'd be, I guess. But uh, maybe it's because I didn't buy last year's game and I'm like kind of out of the Call of Duty loops the way I used to be in. I'm so kind of like out of the zone that now I'm kind of getting back to it. So it's kind of feels like you know what I mean, right? It feels kind of nice actually. Uh, I took a. I, I took a long ass break essentially, and now I'm coming back to it. So maybe that's the reason why I'm kind of. You know, finding it out. But uh, yeah, we definitely need the actual multiplayer maps to be good as well. Because, yeah, I, I don't know. Th th there's that one map that was in the beta as well, right? That is in the game. I, I find that map to be actually very good. I don't know the name. See, I don't even know the name, even though I find that map good. And uh, outside of that, yeah, like, uh, there aren't maybe one or two good maps, and then you got Nuketown, of course. That's it that's it the game feels kind of like it, it lacks maps the game lacks maps though and i also have been feeling like there aren't enough weapons either am i the only one that's feeling that way or you guys feel that Dude, way too? why even fucking bother with the rest of the maps this game may as well have one map that's it it's the same thing as Modern Warfare 2019 when they released Shoe House. The same exact thing. He man. in line though. He in line though. It's pathetic yeah. how bad these maps are. Go watch my video. He ain't lying, but he lied by saying that this is going to be a positive video. Bookmark, guys. But in this specific instant, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. about the, the full review of Black Ops 6 because in that video, just in the, the couple hours I played getting gameplay on random maps that are literally bigger than Nuketown here, I had so many spawn issues. I mean, I, I have never seen a spawn system so broken and illogical as I've seen it in Black Ops 6. However, however, Nuketown, for whatever reason, I, I don't know if they just copied and pasted the spawn logic from previous Call of Duties, this literally has the best spawns in the entire game, bar none. Even over like the bigger maps, like Red Card and Scud. Uh, at, at one, at one, um, in one match, I was able to spawn trap as well, so I, I love it. I love it, man. I love it, man. Maybe that was a glitch or something. I don't think it was a glitch. I, I, I think the spawns are... Uh, because, I, yeah, it brought the Black Ops 1 feeling back to me as well, because in Black Ops 1, you could have spawn trapped, so... Yeah, I was playing a game of Domination, and I was on the A flag, which was uh, taken by the enemies, and a lot of enemies were spawning in while I was capturing that A flag. Uh, and it was good, man. I missed that. I missed that. Uh, ...and stuff. This, this map has a better spawn logic than any other map in the game. Honest to God, without this map in the game, Black Ops 6 is just unplayable garbage. I mean, skill-based matchmaking is already bad enough, and we're going to get into that, because I, I think the skill-based matchmaking in the Nuketown playlist, specifically today, has turned people against this game in record time. It's that fucking severe. Uh, I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I'm using a VPN, and I don't give a single fuck. It only works on PC, but if you want to grab it, you can check out the link below. It'll be in the video description. Use code BLAMETRUTH at checkout. You know the deal. But doing that... Is hey, tranquilo, papi. Yo, papi, chill, papi. Yo, tranquilo, papi. And there goes my life as well man damn homie damn man this is like a this is dark guys this is darker than that uh ah! in this playlist it, it, it's like night and day man it's like night and day I, I think there's more noobs than ever in this playlist too because people see nuketown and they flood to it especially all those new game pass subscribers and whatnot so i don't know this map actually makes black ops 6 playable this map makes black ops 6 feel like a game and with the vpn I don't really have any lag issues with the VPN. I'm not getting railed in the fucking asshole by skill-based matchmaking. I actually have a screenshot where I did not use the VPN. And, like, the lobbies are all the same when you play solo. And by all the same, I mean unplayable, and you are designed not to win. Like, I'm expected to carry these thumbless noobs while facing a full party, or near a full party. I think it's a party of four there. What kind of matchmaking is this? I do not understand. So this guy got like a 12 KD ratio, 10, 8, 2.331. What the actual hell? So 12 kills, right? So zero death, I'm assuming, 12 KD. Simple, simple maths, you know, quick maths, quick maths, quick maths right there. That is, that is insane. That is, that is crazy. Uh, you got 117 there. So these players were good, or were used uh, match made with like a skill? I'm um, probably skill based match right? Like, look at that. This guy's easily like prestige two or three. I, I don't know. 
the Bandit. emblem. Yet? I left that match, turned the VPN on, and said, fuck this shit. So, I don't want to give you guys the wrong impression, though. While this map is a step in the right direction, guys, let's be real here. L let's take it down a notch. This is a 14-year-old map. I have played on this map for literally, no exaggeration, 14 years. Facts. 2010, Black Ops 1 came out. Mm. I was there when this map was fresh off the press. I am still here, and I gotta be honest with you, it's great. It's fantastic, especially with this map pool we have here. But my god, why can't Call of Duty make anything new good? It's yeah. like without those those people making the old maps, making the old uh, progression systems like Prestige Mode, which they also brought back, no one at Call of Duty has the talent to make, so make something new that's actually good. Tell me when I'm telling lies there, man. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Yeah, uh, they need to really be thankful to the Black Ops 1 devs for creating this masterpiece that are that is still feeding their families 14 years later, bro. Like, I've played this for 14 years, and if I'm being honest with you, I'm kind of tired of it. Like, dude, I, I love this map, don't get me wrong, plays great. How about something new of this we quality? We need something new. How about a new map yeah, yeah. of this quality? The last I good... I agree, I agree, and I've been saying this for a while, we need maps like Nuketown. When I say that, I just mean what he's just saying right now. We need maps that are as good and as memorable and as fun as a map like Nuketown. Nuketown, but that is not Nuketown. Essentially, that is a new map. New map that's like I consider a classic is actually what I talked about earlier in Shoe House. Which, by the way, by the way, was a brand new map. So this is not even as good as Shoot House. This is not even as good as you know, what we got in Modern Warfare 2019, for example. Because you're going to get tired of this map a lot quicker. Not only have you played it for 14 years, but this is the only good map in the game. Sadly. Uh, this is the only Sadly. map in the game where spawns work properly as well, it seems. And I I'm sure there's people out there getting spawn trapped on this as I make this commentary and domination and whatnot. But overall, playing, and it could be the VPN, I totally admit that. Overall playing, I, I didn't see too much of an issue. But I gotta be realistic here. Let's cut to some people who are not fucking happy and are already out of the honeymoon phase. Because, uh, again, I realize that I am doing some SBMM fuckery here. Charlie Intel himself says Nuketown 24-7 is great in Black Ops 6 until the skill-based matchmaking kicks in and suddenly we're all playing a CDL match instead of just having oh fun. And I want to ask you guys in the comment section, how is your experience playing uh, a Nuketown or whatever? I, I played like two, three games and uh, yeah, so far I though, like I had some sweats in my lobbies, of course, but uh, it was still playable. Now, the, 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 the way I play nowadays is like, Bro, I, I'm watching a YouTube video or a podcast in the background, that's when I play. If I, if I got like a bunch of YouTube videos that I need to catch up on, I'm like, okay, let me w put those videos and let me play at the same time. So I'm like getting double, double stimulation, right? That's how I, I be playing and uh, I, I, yeah, kind of odd though. But if I, feel, if I play with the game sound on and if I jump in a party with friends who are better than me because they, they also play Rainbow Six a lot. So those, they, my friends are actual sweats, right? If I play in their lobbies, then I think I will have one of the worst experience ever because I remember like when Modern Warfare 2022 came out, you know, Modern Warfare 2022 is the game that introduced the friendly BBC online. You know, it introduced the friendly BBC online as well and added like all that crap, right? So yeah, uh, that's the game I'm talking about. That's the last game I remember playing with friends and the, the experience was horrible with skill-based matchmaking. And uh, yeah, after that, I was like, nah, bruh, I ain't buying Modern Warfare 3. One, because it was a re recycle, rehash. It was supposed to be a DLC for Modern Warfare 2022 so that we should have got it for free or if not for like 20 bucks or 30 bucks, but they charge full price for. Right now, some people are saying Modern Warfare 2023 is actually better than Black Ops 6. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, I mean, that's your opinion, that's your opinion, right? But it is crazy, it is crazy the Call of Duty cycle coming back in full circle, man. But I, let's get back to it. Like, especially if you're playing solo, chime in below because if you're not using any kind of SBMM protect, yeah, yeah, solo. I'm using, I'm playing solo without, uh, without like VPNs or any of this bull squash. Uh, without the game audio, I'm just like playing the game, listening to YouTube videos, and I did had good lobbies. I did, or I should say, I did enjoy my time. Shin, I want to see what it's like. I, I don't want to put myself through that. I'm sorry. I know I'm the, the Codfather here. I don't want to play this game without some kind of SBMM buffer, or it's like unplayable for me personally. As someone who plays solo, 
MW2OG says the map is as expected in just reply to Charlie Holy. Intel. Just a shame how horrendously they tune SBMM in a casual Bruh. game mode. Proper Bruh. killed the retention for me. Get on, play my pity match. Have a good game, then get railed nonstop after. Get off until the next day. Shame. Nero, Bruh. who's been, you know, grinding Bruh. this game a lot. Like he's that is crazy. So, like, that many people are uh, mad on the map? I, I get it, like, it, 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 it's, a, it's a rig based matchmaking, right? Like, the rig skill based matchmaking, no matter how good the game is, like, if skill based matchmaking is uh, treating you poorly, you're not gonna like the game. I, I, I'm i fully aware of that, I fully understand that, I get that, though. Playing a lot, he's trying to prestige, all that stuff. He's been overall pretty positive about Black Ops 6, says this. With the release of Nuketown, it's official. It's not even the maps that are bad in Black Ops 6, it's Black Ops 6 in general. Omni movement, free wall hacks, SBMM, and terrible servers. No maps can work with that formula, even a map as tried and tested as Nuketown. And here's the thing. All of these guys are absolutely right. You might be seeing this gameplay and thinking, like, this looks awesome. Guys, here is the actual issue. I'm, I'm going to explain this. The people in this lobby okay. suck. Uh -oh. It's not a competitive uh -oh. lobby by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not even really playing competitive. I'm just playing to get my chopper, and I'm leveling up this AK-74 because this mm. is a good gun, and I always mm. like AKs. So mm. I'm kind of just having fun. I'm not playing super seriously. Yeah. I'm not playing in a party. It's just me, yeah. right? Yeah. When you play Nuketown like this, this is what Nuketown was designed for back in the day, and it was designed for a no SBMM, relatively chill Black Ops relatively. 1 atmosphere. When you start adding competitiveness to it, when you start adding the, the Sweat Lords to it, who are playing in full parties, and there's no protection from full parties if you're playing solo or with a group of like one, maybe two other people. Nope, no nope, fucking protection against that. Uh, when you do that, you start noticing that, wait, this fucking map is not designed for any sort of competitiveness. Like, it's, it's a good map, it's a three lane map, but eventually, you're just gonna have people holding sight lines, holding lanes the entire match, and mm. beaming you as they're both shooting at you, and mm. you can't do anything about it. And like, when the SBMM gets cranked up, you guys might not realize it if you're in a lower bracket, but like, we're playing a different game. It's like there's six different versions of Black Ops 6 out there, depending on where you fall in the skill bracket. And with the magic yeah. of editing, I actually pause this video. Yeah, the skill based matchmaking is so bad that uh, based off of that, I feel like that the reason I'm enjoying is probably because skill based matchmaking is probably kind to me. I think it is kind to me. I, and, and that's the thing, like, you don't know until it gets like really, really bad, then you start to like hate the game, right? That's how uh, I was back in Modern Warfare 19 as well, because uh, yeah, I was like insanely excited. I was, I was shaking, I was shaking, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was shaking, was hyped up for Modern Warfare 19. A lot of people were, but then it's like, Bumbleclad, my Bumbleclad brothers, Bumbleclad, with the skill mismatch rigging, and maps were really designed for campers as well. So yeah, uh, this time, I mean, so far skill mismatch rigging has been kind to me. I don't know about you guys, uh, let me know your experience as well for sure. Because skill based match again, it's like the devil itself. These, these suckers know, man, just based off of your five, if you play five matches, these suckers know everything about you. You're the size of your BBC, BWC, or LBC, or LWC, bro. Like, whatever you got, these suckers know everything, bro. Okay? They know your entire family tree, they know your blood group, they know everything, they know your IQ level based off of you just playing five games, bro. Like, th th this is serious stuff, man, serious stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, the rig based matchmaking gotta go man it gotta go it's it it has a place of its own and i would say rank play it deserved to be in rank play but not in public matches like the video if you agree dislike if you disagree video and just watch nero's new video talking about what i was talking about when i showed his tweets uh he's saying like nuketown doesn't feel good in black ops 6 when you combine massive you know Bruh. skill based matchmaking issues desync uh inconsistent gunfights because of that but sliding the speed, the servers that can't keep up with any of this stuff. I mean, the spawn system as well, if you want to go with that route. But I, I mean, for me personally, the few matches I played of Nuketown, the spawn system seemed okay. But when you combine all those things, the game simply cannot feel good. Also, if you're mm. playing solo, trying to play casually, which I think a lot of people actually do. I, I think that's a really underrated thing that no one at Call of Duty or Activision actually fucking thinks about. People play solo. Now, in this X Defiant yeah. gameplay, this Mike guy here was teabagging at me. Like, he knows who I am, but I'm not partied up with him, and we're not communicating. So, this is just me playing solo. And what's interesting about this gameplay, I chose it specifically, is that JMO guy that just killed me is a very good player. I think he is also playing solo. Let me just explain real quick how X Defiance matchmaking works. And if you guys oh, want to know go. why I quote unquote glaze this game, let me just explain <laughs> this to you and break it down. Yeah, I, I was going to say like, oh, watch him glaze X Defiant. Here we go, man. Okay, at least the homie's not Delulu. He's aware. He's self-aware. But dog, like X Defiant, bro, 
you cannot compare X to Find with Black Ops 6. Matchmaking wise, okay, you can actually have, uh, and you can have your opinion whether you enjoy this, if you enjoy this game over Black Ops 6 uh, or any other FPS game. Hey, that's your birthright, man. That's your birthright, man. Damn, man. I'm not even gonna be mad, but but let's be real, man. The homie is uh, sipping that copium and he's having the hopium when he glazes X Defined. But I guess it's safe to say that X Defined matchmaking is better than Black Ops 6. I guess, I guess it's better. It's better. Down. And again, this is not something that is, is going to be hard to implement in Call of Duty if they give a fuck and if they care. But let me explain how the matchmaking works in X Defiant. Of course, there's no skill-based matchmaking, but there's also input-based matchmaking. So you can play only controller players, no matter the platform. Xbox, PlayStation 5, PC. If you want to, you can play only controller players. Now, listen, man. X Defiant, it needed to succeed. It needed to succeed. It needed to succeed badly, but it did not. It had 11 million players in the very, very beginning. All right, it had the chance. Suckers gave it a chance. And then, a couple of months later, and last that she wrote, we heard that they were having trouble even hitting 25,000 people. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, you see, like, when... And I'm... Uh, Forget about your opinion, I'm gonna forget about my opinion for a second. What's true is true. Activision is probably looking at it and they're like, hey, we got no competition. And they have no competition, dog. They have, uh, the only competition I would say is Battlefield, but Battlefield also shies the bed. The new one is coming out next year, most probably. They already confirmed that they're working on one, but we don't know when it's coming out. We're assuming it's coming out by the end of 2025, but dog, next year we're having Black Ops 2 Remake right black of seven or whatever they're gonna call it we're having that we're having gta 6 dog so bro like for battlefield i don't know man uh, uh, listen i'm like curious to see how it's gonna look like i'm probably gonna buy it as well if it turns out to be good right but it but the next battlefield game needs to come out around summer or before what i'm trying to say here is that essentially battlefield the next battlefield game needs to come out two or three months before call of duty and the next gta game okay Yes, if, if it needs to have like a serious shot at it, or it needs to come out 2-3 months after GTA 6 to be able to survive and stay on the minds of players and the FPS community, absolutely. And it needs, on top of all, it needs to be good. It really needs to be good. Guys, check out this video on the screen because recently he got caught cheating in Call of Duty. Crazy drama, man. Insane drama with the cheaters. Check this video out and I'll see you right there.